This is one of the smallest and lightest travel trailers in the world. This is the Helio HE3S. It's one of three variations in its lineup and is officially one of the smallest and lightest travel trailers on the market today. In fact, it's so small, you can pick it up and walk away with it, literally. Because of its tiny footprint and feather-like weight, these are marketed to people with small cars, ATVs, and even trikes. So what makes them so light? Well, there's two things. One is that they're just small. And two is how they're built. The trailer is built from a 100% fiberglass molded body with an exterior gel coat. So instead of having seams where your walls and roof normally meet, it's completely seamless. This drastically decreases maintenance and the possibility of having leaks. If we take a look underneath the trailer, you'll notice the floor is also fiberglass and it sits on an aluminum frame. Being that there's no traditional Luon board or wood in the construction of these trailers, even if you did get moisture inside, there's nothing that will absorb and start to rot. Under the aluminum frame are two radial tires wrapped around aluminum alloy wheels, which are connected to what's called a torsion axle. The benefit of having a torsion axle, especially in a small trailer like this, is the suspension on each side operates independently of each other. Normally something this light is going to have a bit of a bumpy ride to it, but the torsion axle helps improve that, so basically, this rides like a Mercedes. Up front, you'll find a beautiful logoed fiberglass battery tray, which will have enough room to house a single battery, and in front of that, the adjustable tongue jack. In addition to the tongue jack, the trailer also has a stabilizer jack at the back. Located on the driver's side are the hookups for your 30 amp shore power, a solar plug, and 110 volt outlets as well. One of the nicest features of this trailer are the frameless tinted awning style windows. Proportionally, these windows are actually quite large and serve multiple purposes. Because of the awning style design, these can be open even when it's raining, and because they're across from each other, having them both open creates a really nice flow of air through the trailer. On top of that, they serve as emergency exit windows as well. On the top of the trailer, they've installed a max air fan cover, which conceals the electric ceiling fan for even more ventilation. Finally, let's take a look at the inside. But before we get inside, take note of how wide the entry door is. Again, for the size of trailer, the entry door is wider than you'd think it'd be. And me being 6'4 and about as flexible as a 2x4, this makes all the difference. On the back of the trailer, they've installed a little locking post just to keep the door open, and behind the door is a second screen door, just in case you've got a view out the back or need increased airflow. Once you're inside, as you can imagine, there's really not much to explore. You can see the exposed fiberglass meshing on each wall, which by the way, it makes everything super easy to clean up. Surprisingly, I actually have plenty of headroom in here. Of course, as I moved further back, I started to lose it, but I could easily sit upright and hang out comfortably. Just below the ceiling fan is a bright LED light for, you know, just in case you get lost. And in the back, you'll find some 110 volt outlets, some USB plugs, the fuse box, and of course the air conditioner. I appreciate the way they've installed the AC as well. In most cases, you see the AC unit protruding from the outside of the trailer, but in this case, they've kept it all internal and have it venting to the underside of the trailer. Now one thing to keep in mind about the air conditioner is that it's an optional upgrade, which comes with positives and negatives. The positive is you get the air conditioning. The negative in my case would be the loss of floor space. With this current setup, the floor is only about six feet in length, which means one of two things. Either I need to adopt a new sleeping style or I'm getting cold feet. Obviously, these are a niche market, but for those of you who either don't have much of a towing capacity or just looking for a dry place to sleep while traveling across country, this makes for a pretty sweet setup. Let me know what you think in the comments. Would you be able to sleep in this setup? Would you change anything? Let me know. And if you're someone who's interested in something like this, you can email me here. And if you enjoyed the video, please consider subscribing, hitting the like button, and hitting the notification bell so you're notified the next time I post. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.